In this chapter, we're going to be building a ring. And we're going to build this ring with history so that we can update it as needed. So for the first lesson, we're going to take care of building the cross section that will make up the main ring. I'm going to work in the right viewport here. And I want my ring to have a diameter of 21 millimeters. So I'm going to start a polyline just for a reference. I'll type 0 to put that at my world coordinates. So the radius of this ring will be 10.5. Type 10.5, hold down my shift key, and click. And I'll go ahead and lock that. And let me hit F7 to get rid of my grid. So my ring is going to be 7 millimeters wide. So to set myself up for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a line from midpoint. And I'm going to go out 3.5 millimeters, which is half of the distance. So that's the distance of my ring. I'm just using this curve for reference, so we are going to delete it. So with my control point curve, I'll draw another curve. This one's going to have three points. And I had the first curve selected before I started the control, so it's still selected after I started drawing the curve. So now I can delete that. I'll hit F10 to turn on my control points. And I'll bring that down. I want to give that just a real subtle arc. That'll be the inside of the ring. Now I'm going to build up the edges of the ring. And I'll come up one millimeter for that. But I want to add a little bit of detail in here. I think something like that would be kind of nice. Yeah, let me move that up just a little bit. Maybe in just a touch. Now I'll take those two curves and I'll do a trim and a join. I'll select this object and I'm going to mirror that over. And I can use a snap right here on my end of my construction curve. And then I'm going to draw another arc through these. So I'll use the arc command. And just kind of drag that up. Pretty good size arc on there. So that looks pretty good. Now I want this surface to set in because I am going to have an inlay that runs around the circumference of the rim. So I'll offset this curve. I'm going to offset that 0 0.5. Type 0.5 and then offset that in there. I'll draw a couple of lines here, and we can give that a slight angle and bring that in. Let's mirror that across. Snap to my endpoint again. And I use a curve boolean to give me the curves that I want. So I'll go to the curve tab, click on the curve boolean command, make sure delete input is equal to all, and I'll click in this area to keep that. And there's my resulting ring cross section. I'll just put some small fillets on these just to add a little highlight. And let's try a 0.125 and see what that gives us. Might be a little bit too small. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's a bit big. Let's try 0.075. I think that looks pretty nice. Rather than having to hit the spacebar every time to reapply this command, if I open this window and right click, then I'm on a repeating fillet command. And I don't have to keep reapplying the command. I'm always in the command until I hit enter to cancel the command. Unfortunately, with fillet, because it needs to know what side of the corner you want to keep, you can't just drag a box around everything like you can with a fillet edge. So you do have to give it the two input curves. I think that looks pretty nice. So just to recap, we have a nice little indent detail here on the sides. It'll catch just a little bit of light on the actual finished design. We do have an arc across here, so any inlay we put, we we're going to want that to flow along here as well. And then we have a very subtle curve down at the bottom, and that's just so it feels nice against your finger. And that'll complete this lesson on setting up your cross sections.